sisters, we gather in the name of the God who creates us, the God who redeems us, and the God who sanctifies us. Amen. Amen. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth. The coastlands wait for his teaching. The readings in the Psalms for this evening are actually appointed in the Book of Common Prayer as one of the occasional properties. For those of you who think about these things, it's proper 21 for social justice. I don't mean to argue with the framers of the Book of Common Prayer, although there are many of us who would. <laughs> but it's a redundancy in my mind to speak of social justice. Because our call as Christians is to, is to foster justice for all people. I think by its nature that makes it social, doesn't it? Justice is a wonderful thing that we talk about a lot. But I want to look at one of our primary images for justice. You've all seen it on courthouses everywhere. The statue of justice, blindfolded, holding a balance, a set of scales. It's the scales I want to focus on, because for me, the fundamental principle of justice is balance, or maybe more importantly, equity. Throughout the day today, we had moments where we heard of the need for justice in places all around our world, including our own community. I couldn't help but feel convicted as we sang the sequence in tonight of all the years that I participated in that kind of injustice put forth in that name. And you know what? I'm still not fully converted about any of it. But I am convinced that we are called like the Messiah to be people of justice. I want to turn to the scripture passage is not the good thing about being a bishop is I can break all the preaching rules. <laughs> Unless Bishop Neil tells me I can. <laughs> I want to take a look at what Micah has to say to the people of Israel. He said, you know what God demands of you. Do justice. Love mercy. Walk humbly. The phrasing is interesting. Do justice. In the prophet Michael, we get in that moment a glimpse of the basic incarnational principle that permeates all of what we believe about what it is to be a Christian. This marriage between the spiritual and the material is represented in the birth of Jesus and what that means for us. Incarnational Christians are concerned about doing, not just about thinking or feeling. Not that those are bad things, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is that unless, unless our thinking and feeling issues for us with some kind of action, we've missed the point. What did James have to say about that? I want to argue a little bit with this translation again. The word that's translated as works is paradox in Greek. I'm not just proving I have a seminary application. I actually read something about it. <laughs> it's a word that is better translated into English as activity. In my mind, it gives it a much broader, broader interpretation in this passage. Faith by itself, if it has no activity, is dead. We are in the modern church 
having enormous struggles about what we claim to believe. It's become a point of division, controversy, pain, not just in the American church, but throughout our community. And I would maintain that all of those fights ignore the call of the letter of James. If what I claim to believe does not issue forth in incarnate activity, it is dead. Jesus says in today's Gospel reading, I have come, or do not think I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace for the sword. Jesus doesn't call us to division, but any time that we struggle with truth, we are going to feel pain. And as we know, pain is not always a sign of destruction. It can easily be a sign of growth, or birth, or new life. 